Now we want to move to uh, continuous time Markov chains. So, so far we studied discrete time Markov chains. When we studied discrete time, time was discrete, right? Like we allowed uh, n equals to 1, n equals to 2, like this. So, we only looked for the change in the Markov chain at, at specific discrete times. And we had allowed ourselves to look only into some countable set of states and that is why we called it a chain because we have certain states going from one state to another state like it is kind of forming a chain there. So, that is why we studied so far discrete time Markov chains. But now, I may do not want to look at the things at particular time instances, but maybe I may want to look at uh, my process continuously. And now, I want to now study what is the Markov property on such a continuous time. We have defined what is a Markov property, what is a Markov chain when my time is continuous, my, my time is discrete. Now, we want to go and see how we are going to deal with the case where my time is not in discretely indexed, but it is a continuous random variable. We already know what is a continuous random process. Continuous random process is nothing but a sequence of random variables indexed continuously, right, at every time. Now, we want to understand what is continuous time Markov chain, okay. So, definition. So, as usual, we are going to always assume that this state space S is discrete. what it is saying? The probability that you are interested in knowing your process takes value state j at time t plus s given your process all the way up to s. What is this is telling? So, this, this condition here tells that you have been told what is your process till time s. And now you are interested in knowing, okay, what is the probability that in further t second, further t more time, that is s plus t, that you are going to take state j. What is this probability? Okay. So, like this, you are 
your process is taking value over continuously this is s and let us say this is 10. So, your process is taking continuously value and you have been given what is your process all the way up to time t and now from this you want to know what is the value your process is going to take at time s plus t here. This process, this probability only depends on the value your process has taken at time s. I really did not care about all this before time s. Only if you are going to look something beyond s, I only know to know what has happened at time s. And uh, this is what this is telling. This is uh, same as what we did it in the Markov chain, right? So, there we have said that okay, the feature depends only on the current state, and I do not care about my past. Here it is also saying the same thing, okay? Past, I do not care, just tell me what is going to be happening at the current. But now it is just extension to the continuous time version. Here, T and S both are continuous valued. Okay, so we have already seen some processes, right? Uh, continuously indexed. What is uh, such a one process? Okay, renewal process where what was MT, right? MT was continuously evolving. And what would you say that MT is distributed how? We just said that it has it is distributed Poisson with rate lambda t, right? Like uh, what was uh, uh, so? What would you say? Uh, yeah, Poisson process. But uh, for uh, general process, do we say anything like if you have a renewal process UIs with certain mean value, what is MT is going to look like? So fine. So we we had specifically mentioned about my Poisson process. By the way, is Poisson process is a continuous time process? How did we define a Poisson process? Poisson process is a counting process. We said right, and it is going to give the number of arrivals or number of uh, some events happening till time t. So there also it was a sequence of continuously indexed random variable. Okay, fine. Let us say now if this uh, Poisson process is a CTMC, okay. Poisson process is a continuous time random process. We want to see what, whether it is a it satisfies this definition, okay. Let us say NT. is a Poisson process with rate lambda. So, we have we know that at any time t this n t is what n t is the number of arrivals or uh, life lives that has occurred in the interval 0 to t. So, all these values are integer valued numbers n of n of t is this is a counting process right. So, every time it is going to count how many times things have happened in the interval 0 to t. So, n of t is going to take value 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. Now, whether if I am going to Ask the question, okay? Number of renewals or number of uh, arrivals till time t plus s given till this. Does it depend only on n u n of s, not all u less than or equals to s? And for specifically, let us assume that n of s is equals to some i. So, when I said this n of u given given n of u u less than or equals to s means I have described you my process all the way up to s. 
when I said I have described my process till S, I have told you what are the states that has been taken by this process till time S. Okay. So, let us say at, at time S it has taken a particular state i and now I want to see that whether this probability it only depends on what is the state taken as S and does not depend on what has happened before it. Okay, is that true? Okay, so let us say anyway, that is true right like because what has happened till S and I am just counting. So, my counting accumulates after that point I am only going to see what more has come. So, let us uh, write that in a formal way. So, this is the intuitive idea, but we have to bring in the definition of my Poisson process to argue this. So, instead of asking this question, n t plus s going to j with n of s equals to i, I am asking that okay, you the number of increment that has happened between the interval t plus s to s is j minus i. So, it is the same thing right like instead of going directly from i to j at time t plus 1, it is I am asking that between s and t plus s interval j minus i at intervals have happened. And with this we are done right. What is the property of a Poisson process? Poisson process has independent increment. So, what is this is saying? This so far this is saying that okay, this is like the number of arrivals in the interval 0 to s is i and this is the number of arrivals that has happened between s to t plus s. So, the interval here is s to t plus s and here the interval is 0 to s and these are independent event. This is nothing but probability goes to j minus i and here i, so this is I have assumed that n of s is already known to, known to me. So, you already see that you have eliminated dependency of this probability on all the things that has happened before time s and this you can just now go and uh, do the reverse process then this is saying okay this is equal j q 1 yeah this is still n s equals to i and then you are done. So, by definition of the Poisson process you already have this condition. So, what is the crucial point you use? You wanted to make sure that the increments in disjoint intervals are independent. If they are not you do not know it right. So, Okay, let us say something has happened in this interval and the amount of the increment that is going to happen in the next some, some interval is going to depend on what has happened in, in the previous interval, then they are not independent, right. Then in that case, I actually needed to know what has happened before, before I can say what is the probability that uh, this is going to happen in this interval. So, uh, there is no Markov property there. But in the Poisson pro process given that like this in the in increments in disjoint intervals are independent this allows us to make sure that I do not need to know before what happened to say what is happening in this current interval ok. So, that is fine. Uh, now, so now most of the things now we are going to know next is a very similar to what we did for the DTMC like what we when we started with DTMC we defined what is my transition probability matrix, how I define what is my one step transition probability matrix. Then we said how I am going to write my joint uh, finite time distributions in terms of my this transition probability matrix. So, let us see how we can do all the things for my continuous time Markov chains. 
So first of all, we are going to, for simplicity, we are going to assume time homogeneity like the other, like in the DTMC. We are going to assume that So if you are asking the question, okay, at time s you are in state i, and uh, what is the probability that you go to state j at time t plus s? So here you are looking for an interval s to s plus t, right? So its length is simply t. I are going to assume that this probabilities only depend on that length of the interval, not exactly from the point where you started. Okay. So it does not matter where you are going to start, what matters here in this probability is what is the length of that duration. This is I am just going to call it time homogeneity. It does not matter which s you are going to put as long as the length of that interval is same, I am going to, it is going to be governed by the same probability. Now we are going to denote by this p of t is equals to p i j t. So all this collection of probabilities for every state i and j for a given t, I am going to denote it by p of t. So is my p of t is a stochastic matrix, my p of capital P of t, it is going to uh, stochastic matrix, right? All the row is going to sum to 1. And we are going to like on the earlier case, we are going to define p of 0 to be i, identity matrix. At time t, we are going to assume that in 0 times, you are going to be just falling back in your own state, not you are going to move to any other state. So that is why only diagonals will all be 1, others are going to be 0. And then this uh, we are going to skip, but you can verify that if I have transition probability matrix for time t plus s. This can be written as P of T and P of S. So this is in a similar way what we did for T TTMC, where we could uh, split my transition probability matrix for a sum of two discrete times into that of individual times. So we are just uh, doing the same thing here. So it follows the same steps there, just keeping this. Okay, now here is the contrast. Let us contrast in our DTMC, we had written P of n. What is P of n? P of n there in the, in the case of DTMC is the n step transition probability matrix. That we had written in terms of one step transition probability matrix by raising it to the power n. So now is such a similar analogy holds for CTMC. So what is the meaning of n here? n steps. When you are going to take t here, what is the interpretation in CTMC? It is like interval of length t. There you will be in, interested in transition at every instance, right? When you are looking at n, you are ever looked at n trans n time steps. But in time, even in in some interval zero to t, you will be interested in, in uh, transition uh, transition at every instant. That means it has infinitely many uncountably many transitions possible in that. So that does not make sense. Like I am going to write uh, p of t to P to the uh, P for this P to the power capital T or like so even it is not clear like how to define a one step one one step transition probability here right like my transition can happen at any instance starting from zero so that uh, that uh, that uh, make does not make sense to represent my transition probabilities matrix here in terms of one step 
transition probability matrix. So, earlier in a DTMC for a time homogeneous case, it made sense to give my n step transition probability everything in terms of one step transition probability. But in when you move to DTMC, sorry, CTMC, you have to specify my transition probability matrix for every t. Okay. So in CTMC, I need to know this p of t for all t greater than or equals to t. We will see that. Okay. Why why it has to be of that form, not anything else. So p of t plus one, we have. So we are saying that it is going to split. So uh, is that exponential is the only one which will have this property? Is that the case? T plus delta t, whatever, like you just uh, define S as uh, delta t. Okay, so we, we will see a bit uh, in a couple of minutes that it is indeed true that uh, this distribution is going to be uh, exponential distribution, but not in in on this what in this like here it is clear, but uh, we will sit in a different setting and then we will again revisit it, but whether this p of t has to be exponential again. So, I said I have skipped this, you have to go and use the same steps uh, as we did it in uh, uh, DTMC case, okay. There also we had split right, there we did it for any n1 plus n2, we had said this is going to be p of n1 to p of n2, you have to just uh, do it like. So, here just like split this probabilities conditioning on two parts and uh, just apply the Markov property that you are going to get, okay fine. So this Pt here that is why you are going to call it as transition probability function. Because it has to be specified for every t. So every t it is a matrix, you are just going to call it as transition probability function. Now you can verify that simply I am going to write this finite dimensional distributions for this. So, we will see that this can be just like after applying the Markov property uh, 0 i1, t1, i1, i2, t2, 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 And uh, if you further write it as x naught equals to i, this is your initial distributions. The same thing you could write it as no, not unconditional one. Okay, so this is the conditional joint distribution, right? So you are looking at uh, you are CTMC taking value i1 at time t1, i2 at time t2, and 
i n at time t 1 given that initially it started with state i naught you could simply split it like this just apply the Markov property repeatedly then this probability is nothing but probability that you go from state i 0 and uh, i 1 in time t 1 and then probability that you go from state i 1 and i 2 in time t 2 minus t 1 similarly. But this is like a conditional distribution but now if you are interested in this simply the joint distribution and which we call finite dimensional distribution FDDs. So now for this you could just uh, bring in just unconditional it over your initial value. So if you know your initial value you could write this. So, so we always said like to complete the characterization of your, uh, your process you need to give full description of your finite dimensional distributions right. So to give finite dimensional distribution for the DTMC what all the things we said we needed? Right, we said we need a one step transition probability matrix and your initial distributions. So here also what all the things you need to give a complete distribution description of your process? You need to give your initial distribution and then you need to give your transition probability function here okay. So, so far what we have been doing is we have a continuous time Markov chain. We have described about its Markov property and uh, how to write down its uh, finite dimensional distributions. Now in a CTMC once you are going to hit a state you are now you are you are continuously watching it right at every instant you are watching your random process you want to know how much time my process is going to stay in that state before it jumps to a new state like if it is a ctmc it must be the case that okay it hits some state maybe stayed in that state for some time and then went to a new state and trade it on that state for some time and then move to another state or it may it may be such a very very shaky random process that it is not staying in any state for any good amount of time it, it came to one state immediately switched to another state and uh, it can be very very like uh, uh, unstable thing like it is not uh, spending any time in uh, any state for a longer time but you want to capture this okay. So this is anyway continuous time process like I am watching it continuously. So in the discrete times you only worried about your Markov chain at particular instances. But here I have to now completely describe how it is behaving at every time instance. Maybe one way to describe that is just, just uh, alternate give an alternative characterization by saying that if I hit this state at, if I am at this state at particular time. I am going to stay in this state for this much more time. Maybe that is a random value but if you can give the distribution maybe you can alternatively characterize your continuous time Markov chain right. So that those are all can be given through your sojourn times. Sojourn time in a So sojourn time is the amount of time you are going to spend in a state before you move out of it okay. So we are going to define at any time t So can you parse it what is happening here? So okay, I am defining this function y of t for any given time t. What I am looking is I am looking let us say x of t is any state at time t. Now I am looking for t of s. So t of s will take some state right like uh, this is the 
state taken at time t of s. I am looking for s from time t in which it is going to take a time uh, taking going to take a state other than x t. And what I am looking at, I am going to look for an s which is the smallest among all of them. So, I am going to look for the time that yeah, so the time I am going to leave, I am going to stay in that state, right. And basically, I am basically here when I check this condition, I am looking when I actually left my state. So, when I said t, I do not care in which state I am, whatever that state is x t, that is let us some random state. What I am just looked is how long I stayed in that state and I am just looking at the minimum amount of time that is required. And this could be a random quantity, right, because both x of t and x of t plus s themselves are a random quantity. And this is what we are going to call it as a sojourn time. So, sojourn time is basically the minimum amount of time you are going to spend on a particular on, on a state at that time, at a time t. So, this is defined for every t. So, you look for a process at some time t, you just see when is the earliest that it is going to change its state. That is going to give you a sojourn time. Now comes this theorem. So, what it is saying is, okay, take any state MC, let us focus on a particular state i and at time t. You have given that at time t, you are in a particular state i. Now, what have been asked is the probability that y t is greater than u. What is y t greater than u means the probability that it is going to stay in that state i for at least u more units, okay. At least u more units going to be e to the power a i u for some a i which is between which is a positive real number. So, what is the distribution of y t condition on x t equals to i then it is going to be exponentially distributed with some a i which is function of that state which your process has taken at time t, okay. So, if you realize that, so okay, fine. So, these a i's, let us say for every i, I have this a i's. Once you know what is uh, your uh, state space, you have for all i's, you know a i's. And let us say at time arbitrary time t, you realize that you are in particular state i, okay. Now, the amount of time that it is going to continue to stay in that uh, same state is now is exactly according going to happen according to this distribution, which is now exponentially distributed with parameter what? This parameter a i. So, in a way what we are saying is if your continuous time process has this Markovian property it must be the case that the amount of time it is going to stay in a particular state at any arbitrary time is also memoryless. Exponential distribution we, we know it is a memoryless property, right. 
So what is Markovian property? Markovian property in a way like I do not care what has happened before it, what matters is my current state after it is only going to govern next thing. In a way there it is also given the current state it is it does not depend on anything which has happened before right. So for that in a way like we, we, we would not be surprised with such a result that if you already know that you are going to be in a particular state at time t it must be the case that the amount of time you are going to spend in that state is again exponentially distributed. So fine, so let us uh, quickly go through the arguments ok. So let me define this quantities here, I am interested in probability that x of s equals to i and t. So I am going to define this probability as that uh, given that I am uh, in, in state i at time t that I continue to stay in that state i in the interval t to t plus u plus v ok. So alternatively this is nothing but saying ok I am in this interval. I was already in state i at time t I will continue to stay in that state in this interval. So this one you can simply expand it again by chain rule. So for this uh, probability I just applied chain rule I split this interval t to t u plus v to t to t plus u and then uh, t plus u to t plus u plus v. So I have just split uh, my total time between t to t plus u plus v into this part t plus u and then Now by definition what I am looking at like given x t equals to i, I am now asking the question ok x of s that I am going to stay in the same state i in this uh, interval starting from t to again t plus u. According to this definition this is nothing but g of u right, earlier it was for g of u but now I split it is only for the interval g of u. And uh, what is this other part now? For this other part I am going to again apply my Markov property. From Markov property I know that actually I have already applied my Markov property and uh, I have already know that my x of s is i in the interval t to t plus u and I do not care what has happened before that. So uh, I already know at x of s I have going to i and now I am asking the question ok what is the probability that it is going to continue to stay in the state i again and now what is the length of this interval it is going to be v. So it must be the case that this is g of v. So this probability I could split it like this and as one of you said like uh, it is only the property of the exponential distribution that I could do this. So it must be the case that this probability here that I am going to stay. So okay, so what I have just showed is g of of tie is equals to is equals to e to the power e of i t for some yeah zero zero I do not know what. So what we have basically said is given that I am in state state equals to i the amount of time I am going to continue to stay 
in that is again exponentially distributed and that is why I am going to get it. But you see that uh, okay fine this is the distribution of the amount of time you are going to continue in the same stream you are looking at end. But what is this here? What is this probabilities here and why we could split it like this? So, what is Pt plus S? It is the probability that q1 some state at time 0 that you are going to take some other state at time t plus s right and uh, that I am going to express it as product of these two terms. Do you feel that uh, it should be also like uh, the only possibility that this can happen is if uh, all this my probabilities. So, here they are probabilities they are all going to be exponentially distributed. So, okay, what is the definition of this? G i of t is like this is amount of time I am going to continue to stay in state i again for uh, t more times right. Like uh, this is uh, let us say uh, this is going to okay this i here is the your initial state let us say let us put this uh, is equals to t equals to 0 here and let me make this is equals to t. Then I will be just looking at 0 to t in this interval and this is going to be this. So, the amount of time I have spent is going to be this much distribution. Then uh, is it not uh, exactly the thing what I am asking for? Okay, fine. So, this is the step you need to check that exponential is the only uh, distribution that can be split like this. That is what I said like uh, from that property we are going to use this. So, how we are going to do this? We, we have already not come across this. Okay. So, fine. So, how we are going to do this? It requires a couple of steps. Uh, so, maybe like uh, uh, you guys need to figure it out uh, how we are going to do this or we will just put it as uh, an assignment question. Okay. Is it the case that is what we, are, we try to argue right? What is the interpretation of a P there and what is the interpretation of G here? So, okay fine. So, there are two things you need to convince that it is not really necessary that my each of this P i j s here in this matrix has to be necessarily like uh, exponential or like is it the case that uh, that is the only way. So, now if you are going to use this argument that uh, the sum has split if you could split it like this if exponential is the only possible distribution why is that not necessarily be here or uh, it is the only case ok. So, let us check that and then here is uh, P i j or exponential. So, okay, so let us stop here.